there may be niches on the moon where some of the microorganisms we know could survive. Recent research by scientists at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center suggests that some of the microbes we know of could survive in extreme conditions near the moon's south pole. Perhaps the Artemis mission will be able to verify this. If the political, technological and, above all, economic situation allows, Americans may soon return to the moon. The main idea of the Artemis program is to visit the Silver Globe again and set up a base there, but astronauts can also look for life, because, as scientists have established, in very cold, constantly shadowed craters on the moon, microorganisms brought there from Earth could potentially survive. One of the most striking things our team discovered is that given recent research into the ranges where some microbes can survive, there may be potentially habitable niches for such life on certain airless bodies, Prabal said. Saxena, one of the authors of the study. More than half a century has passed since the landing of the last manned spacecraft on the moon by NASA. It was the Apollo 17 mission. And the last astronauts stepped on the surface of our natural satellite in December 1972. Another manned mission with a landing on the Silver Globe is Artemis 3. Its launch is planned for 2025. It will land near the south pole of the moon. Scientists expect that it is in this area that it will be possible to encounter traces of life that could survive in such unfavorable conditions. There are, super cold, and permanently shadowed craters. According to the researchers, even the growth of certain microorganisms may be possible to a certain extent. They could, for example, survive in niches on the lunar surface where, on the one hand, the temperature can be bearable for them, and on the other hand, they are shielded from harmful cosmic radiation. But how could there possibly be life on the moon? The life that astronauts would be looking for on the surface of our natural satellite may come from Earth. But how could it get there? Two potential routes are primarily considered. First, pieces of rock, terrestrial meteorites, which were thrown into space by the impact of an object hitting the Earth, could then land on the moon. However, one more condition would have to be met here. The microorganisms would still have to survive such a journey, which would not be so easy. The second potential route for terrestrial microorganisms to the moon is us, humans. Paradoxically, the Artemis III mission itself may somehow distort the results of potential research. As the scientists themselves emphasize, the final landing approach will certainly leave some carbon dioxide and ice on the lunar surface along the flight path. This may therefore affect what astronauts find later. However, our knowledge of how lunar ice is formed is quite scant. And so these circumstances in themselves will raise potentially interesting research. Although of course the initial state will not be known in this case. NASA hired theologians to see how humans would react to a possible discovery of alien life. How would people react if scientists found evidence of extraterrestrial life? NASA experts turned to representatives of various religions to help them understand how the possible discovery of alien life would change the way we see the universe. Whether it be microbial life or aliens straight out of Hollywood movies, it's more about the existential quandaries that extraterrestrial life would pose from a spiritual point of view. As technology advances, humanity builds better and better telescopes, sends vehicles to other worlds, and searches for extrasolar planets that could be suitable for life. But what happens when we encounter such a life? 
To this end, NASA has turned to representatives of the major religions to help assess and understand the existential conundrum that humanity will face if we discover alien life elsewhere in the universe. The project was carried out at the Princeton University Theological Research Center in 2015 to 2018 under the name, The Societal Implications of Astrobiology. The participating clergy were tasked with exploring how people of different faiths might react to news of the discovery of extraterrestrial life, The Times reported. NASA allocated $1.1 million for this purpose. The program was attended by 24 priests. Among them were Christian priests, a Jewish rabbi and an Islamic imam. This project was intended to help determine what the theological implications of finding life on another planet would be, even at the microbiological level. After all, the discovery of extraterrestrial life, whatever it may be, raises serious questions not only for scientists, but also for theologians. Is it mentioned in the holy books? Does it agree with the creation stories? Do the possible aliens adhere to the same moral values as we do? Why did God place life on distant planets? These are serious questions. Especially when we consider that billions of people in the world declare belonging to one of the great religions. How would alien life change their perception of God? Would religions have to change the doctrine? There are many examples throughout history of new scientific discoveries that violate religious systems. But the clergy involved in the project believe that the world's major religions would be able to accept the possibility of extraterrestrial life without compromising their beliefs. The most important findings are that followers of many religions report that they can embrace the idea without difficulty, Dr. Andrew Davison. An Anglican priest and theologian at the University of Cambridge with a PhD in biochemistry from Oxford, who participated in the study, told The Times. In the project in 2016-2017, author of the book, Astrobiology and Christian Doctrine, to be published next year. Non-religious people seem to overestimate the challenges that religious people would experience if they were faced with evidence of alien life, he adds. According to Davison, the confirmation of the existence of extraterrestrial life would mean that large numbers of people would turn to their religions for guidance, in an attempt to grapple with what the discovery would mean for the stature and dignity of human life. A similar opinion was expressed by representatives of Islam and Judaism. The clergy of these denominations admitted that the faithful would have no problem accepting the discovery of alien life, nor would it cause problems with doctrine. According to former head of NASA's Institute of Astrobiology, Carl Pilcher, the notion that Earth is the only planet in the universe that has life is simply unthinkable when there are over 100 billion stars in our galaxy. Over 100 billion in the universe. Galaxies. This is not an isolated view. Some similarly speculative scientists believe that the question of alien life is not really a question of whether or not we find it, but when. Even in our solar system, there are a few places beyond Earth where life could develop. Scientists believe Jupiter's moon Europa has a liquid ocean beneath its icy crust, where conditions could theoretically support life. Similar conditions, at least at first glance, exist on Saturn's icy moon Enceladus. But Mars is also considered. Where liquid water existed in the ancient past and conditions were much more hospitable to life as we know it. The possibility of life in the dense clouds of Venus is also being considered. As recently reported by scientists from MIT, Cardiff University and Cambridge University.